Good morning and welcome to another section of the Santa Fe National Forest. And we're not just in any part, we're in a part that I have been wanting to visit for a many a years. When you caught us on our last vlog, we were east of Santa Fe. Now we've traveled northwest to another portion of Santa Fe National Forest. We are 7,900 feet above sea level. So I'm still not used to the elevation yet. Hello everybody. Good morning. What are you cooking this morning, babe? I am making uh, my yogurt pancakes, but I'm doing bananas. So I've got my little bananas already sliced up. Put them on top. After you pour the batter? Delish. Mm -hmm. So the main reason that I wanted to come to this part of the Santa Fe National Forest is not really for the National Forest. It's for Vias Caldera National Preserve. It just became a part of the National Park System back in 2015, but when you go visit it, it looks like Yellowstone. It doesn't have buffalo, but it has elk, black bear, uh, wild turkeys, all the works. Oh, and no wolves. We saw a herd of elk yesterday when we pulled in here, so that is... I mean, it was just right there. We didn't even have to like go looking for it. We were driving to the visitor center. Yeah, well, we had to pass through that because the main highway goes through the caldera to get to this national forest that we're in right now. What else is so cool about this national forest is it's in a valley that's a lot like a feature that we visited in Santa Fe a long time ago. Uh, two years ago with Jonathan, we went to Santa Fe, and then while we were there, we went to the Bandelier National Monument, which is a valley that comes out of the uh, caldera as well, east, southeast of the caldera. But this rock feature looks just like something out of Bandelier National Monument. I mean, look at that. This massive tree here has cut through this rock, split it apart. How cool is this? How cool is this? And then look over here, look over here. We've got all this erosion, like, like a rock hole, and it keeps going. Is this not cool to be a camping spot in the National Forest? Look. It's pretty steep. I mean, look at this. Look at this. How cool. This is even by itself. But it's a quick to erode a soft clay material but it's still cool and we just woke up and last night we had some heavy rain it was crazy it was wicked like the lightning show is what was crazy i had like the worst uh worst thoughts come to my head with that lightning what that our tent would get shot? That we would get electrocuted like we would get hit struck by lightning or one of these trees would get struck by lightning and fall so we had to go to walmart as always for something and kelly ended up getting a table that she has been looking for for how long uh when we decided we were going to go full time i started looking for a table that was four foot tall so that i was hunched over cutting up vegetables that's why i like cutting up over here vegetables but um we were in walmart actually getting a new jug we got a new uh, water jug and I was like, let's just go look at the tables because I've seen them online, but we had ordered so much stuff online. I was just like, mm, let's just do with what we got. And lo and behold, they have, here it is, four foot table. It's like bar height that you would have in your kitchen counter. I'm telling you, I feel like I should have like a bar stool over here. Just, yeah, I mean, it's, it's This legit. is so tall and nice. It's legit. Mm -hmm. Okay, we are done with all of our morning duties and we've packed up everything we can and we've walked the trailer and we are going to check out the hot springs. So this is Forest Road 376 and if you could see 
there's a ton of camping on this road. Now we're heading northeast on 376. When we get up to the main highway, all we're going to do is just drive over the highway to the other side and we can keep going north on that road. That takes you straight to the San Antonio Hot Springs. Okay, apparently this is the trail to the San Antonio Hot Springs. I think it's less than a mile. It's not very far. And we have a little friend here. Yeah. He's gonna follow us. <laughs> I guess we bring good energy. Because <laughs> everybody's been trying to catch this dog because uh, the tags say Virginia and they're trying to get the phone number, but when you go to touch him, he runs off. Ew, it's a girl. Oh, her? Okay. It's poop. Wow. Just lead us to the hot springs. It's, it's like a tour guide. <laughs> yeah, she's like, apparently everybody thinks this is really cool. We're just going to keep going this way. I'll show you where it's at. Follow me. Just give me some food. She's doing her own thing. Okay. Four wheel drive. Thistle actually hung out. She stayed back for a little bit. I guess we'll see her again later. But we have made it to the hot springs. Well, we're not there yet, but this is a trail down to it. Look at that. I mean, that rock outcrop up there is so cool too. <laughs> I don't either, but we crossed this bridge and, and there was a cabin directly behind y'all. It says there's a trail right there. Yeah, but I think the hot springs are that way. Okay. Let's go check that out. So y'all, I was wrong. Once again, I've done this before. This is not my first time to go the wrong way. We were supposed to cross that bridge and go up next to that cabin. That is where the hot springs are located. So let's turn back around. But this is so pretty. This is so pretty. We're supposed to go this way on this trail. That looks a lot more traveled than uh, where Kelly yeah, and I were it going. Yeah, like that was just cattle just traveled that way. It's interesting. Oh, pretty. It is pretty. There's the cabin right there. What we were talking about. Dang. All right, is it hot? I, this is not it, man. This is not it? Yeah. Oh, this is it. This is it. This is hot. So that is warm. I wouldn't say it was hot. It was warm, but I think there's other springs that are cold, okay, kind of dripping into it. But we're gonna keep going because the trail keeps going. And there, the picture, there's actually like a bath bathtub. Well guys, that hot spring, it was pretty awesome. It was, it was hot. It was super hot. But like we thought, it was it's pretty crowded and uh, we don't like imposing on people. So we're gonna let everybody have their space. 
But now we're fixing to go off and do some more exploring and have a little bit of fun. We have made it to the caldera. So this is the Valles caldera. If you follow this main road all the way down there, way down there next to that mound of trees, that's the visitor center. So what's so cool about all this is this all became a giant mound. It exploded like a super volcano because that's kind of what it is. And it uh, put ash and everything all up in the sky. It was more powerful than Mount St. Helens and probably changed the climate and cooled the atmosphere. And whenever it collapsed, it collapsed in after all the uh, volcanic activity was completed. But then there's still volcanic, uh, dormant volcanic activity occurring below that caused that mountain right there to be built in the very center of it. So this caldera does a whole entire circle all the way around that mountain. So all this exploded. When did that happen? Two point something million years ago. Oh, okay. I don't know. I got a. I got some. Long time ago. It was a long time ago. It happened before or after Yellowstone. That I don't know. Oh. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and take this road and drive into it. We're gonna go behind the visitor center because we already went to the visitor center yesterday to pick up brochures, find out what there is to do around here. So here we go. doing a short little hike to this cute cabin. And there's just be a nice little brook or stream right beside it. But these rock formations is what get me. That is so pretty with those trees. And that hill. with a well yes they capped it off but guys this was this is so pretty this is so little house on the prairie feeling but it. it's starting to rain on us so we're gonna head back to the truck very quickly because it gets cold when it rains it does get cold but cold then once it stops it gets hot yeah the parking for this is right at the very front of the entrance you just park right here off the side of the road now we're gonna drive on down see what else there is guys we are up to the east fork of the Jemez river and this thing is so pretty and it's some of the best trout fishing in the southwest is what we've heard so we just entered the visitor center and when you get here there is a gate right behind this building and you have to get one of these tags here to enter the preserve and just fyi dogs are not allowed in the preserve so you can come here but once you get here you're not allowed to take any of your pets past this point the whole road is 12 miles to a t we're not doing that we're going to go up to one spot where there's some volcanic activity it's called obsidian Rock. It's a volcanic rock that the uh, natives here used to use to cut or make surgical grade arrowheads, basically. And this is the gate. Oh, you were doing it, honey? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank you. Self serve. Should I drive off? She didn't like that very much. I'm geeking out. We're probably in her. We're probably in her. Okay. Did y'all see the prairie dogs earlier? Was that not cool? I love those little guys. Herd of elk. Let's get a close up for you guys.
So this is the spot that the ranger told us to park to see the, the obsidian rock. Yeah, they said you didn't have to walk very far, maybe like a hundred yards. So we're gonna see and what we can find. What's so neat is I just found out about this rock. Kelly has known about it forever. <laughs> I, I might know it once I see it, but- I the, was just always interested in rock. Actually, here it is. Yes, this is it right here. Yeah, there it is. And what it what they do with it is they would chisel it to make a weapons arrowheads and it would be as sharp as a surgical knife nowadays. And that's all from the volcanic explosion that occurred here. Isn't that cool? Isn't that just so cool? That's so cool. Look at that. It's very sharp. It's like glass. That is like glass. Yeah, it's just all over. Yeah, I just wanted to see it. That is so cool. But um Little FYI, you're not allowed to camp in here. No, yeah, there's no camping. They have campgrounds off the main road that we took to go camp in the National Forest. They have campgrounds there. No showers or anything, just toilets. <coughs> that sounds pretty bad. I thought we were here all night last night. Yeah. And the lighting was just so crazy. I was like, well, that's it, I'm gonna die. We might have to cut this short, guys. Yeah, I don't wanna get framed on. I don't wanna be uh, struck by lightning either. Oh, <gasps> look at this piece. Oh, that's huge. That is huge. I mean, look at how classy this looks. And this is what they would chisel into arrowheads and other knife tools. That is so cool. Y'all see that? So this is the rock you were talking about. Mm -hmm. Wow. It looks like a shark tooth, but yeah, I could tell how sh that would cut you. Yeah. That would cut you. So whenever that uh, volcanic explosion happened, it turned this into basically glass almost. That is so neat. Hmm. It's just all along the road. <clears throat> well, that's pretty much what I wanted to see. That yeah, was so cool. No, he was right. Well, right, it's getting on. late and we are about to head back to camp because Kelly Cooking is about to dinner. cook some good food. We some gonna good eat. I'm starving. <laughs> so we'll see you there. Guys, look how dirty the old bear Jew is. What? You know you did some adventuring when you got mud on it. Good news though, all, our, all of our stuff is still here. So like we promised, Kelly is about to cook something phenomenal. I am making my pepperoni pizza in the Dutch oven, on the fire. Yeah, you heard that right. Pepperoni pizza in the forest.
Good morning, guys. It is a beautiful, sunshiny day. No clouds whatsoever. It is pretty nice. So this morning, I'm going to make my blueberry biscuits, which are kind of like scones, but I'm going to cut them in like biscuit shape. And, uh, but I'm going to use buttermilk with scones. I would use heavy cream. So it's going to be like, a, it's just a blueberry biscuit and some bacon. In the last vlog, we had someone has to ask in the comments, how is the propane working up here in higher altitude? It is affected a little. Yeah, I just, I didn't figure it out last time, but I figured it out last night. Really, it really does make it a little bit more difficult for the cooker to get up to the temperature it needs to be. It, uh... The flame doesn't want to ignite as easily. It, it has affected things. It really has. But while Kelly's doing that, I want to show y'all the actual map of the Valles Caldera. And also, I told y'all that it was more powerful than the Mount St. Helens eruption in the 1980s. It's actually 300 times more powerful than the Mount St. Helens eruption. And that obsidian rock that we were talking about, that we were seeing everywhere, something I found out that was so cool is that that rock was made in the arrowheads. We talked about that, but people traded with it and pieces of the rock from here, the obsidian rock from here, have been found in Nebraska, North Dakota, Texas, and as far away as Northern Mexico and Mississippi. Mississippi, which means there might've been some in Arkansas somewhere, Kelly. Oh yeah? Yeah, I mean, think about that. That is awesome. I think they're done. Ooh, look at that, look at that. Yeah, mm. So what was in that that you made? This was um, powdered sugar, of course, and uh, vanilla and heavy cream. Is it good? Heart attack on the plate. <laughs> right on, let's it's eat Okay, y'all, that's it for this one. Sorry we didn't get to see the other hot springs, but it took us a while to do dishes and all that jazz. And we got a lot further we, we, than we thought that we need to go. We got to book it to Colorado, which we're not far, but we have to make some stops, get food, and fill up our water tank. So we'll see you guys in Colorado. Catch you on the other.